Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video, doing the EC Extended uh, forecast for UK and the rest of Europe as well. Uh, for today's second video, so as well as on a Tuesday, this is your 30-day uh, forecast for Europe. I should get on that for you in a moment. Just say that first video today on 6am upload, and we'll have a 10 to 14 day for you later on today as well. So please check out the uh, videos and uh, whatnot. Thank you so much for doing that. Like, share, subscribe, and thank you so much for ECMDOF.int for supplying us with the charts as well thank you so much ec right gonna start off with week one mean cell pressure anomaly taking uh, taking us from the 20th 27th of february so uh the coming week or this week we'll have high pressure out to the uh, west of the uk and ireland in the north atlantic low pressure covering northern and northeastern parts of europe and then a ridge down across the southeastern uh, corner of Europe. The 500 millibar height anomaly looks like that. Above average heights extending in from the Atlantic into western and also southern uh, parts of Europe. Low pressures down towards Spain and Portugal and in the far northeast of Europe into the northwest of Russia as well. So the temperature anomaly is looking for uh, the coming week. So cold in the extreme northeast um i write finland into the far northwest of russia and also it's saying down into some of those baltic sea states rather chilly out towards spain portugal and the far west or northwest of france otherwise milder than average particularly through these eastern parts of europe so anywhere from like germany poland eastwards to the black sea and then south of that into the balkans into much of uh the east part of the med italy greece turkey coming up with above average temperatures through those areas and some places like three to six degrees above normal so very significantly mild on average the uk and ireland generally on the mild side but a little bit colder towards the extreme southern areas of uh, England. And precipitation-wise, so it could be very dry in the far uh, west and northwest, Ireland, UK, into the low countries, Belgium, Holland, Netherlands, southern parts of Denmark, and much of Germany, looking drier than normal. Also dry in the far southeastern corner, particularly in the eastern part of Mediterranean, Greece and Turkey, dry on average through there. But there are wet regions as well. One such region is like southern France to northern Italy, and then southwards into the central bowl of the Med, from the Barrier Islands to Corsica and Sardinia, and then back into northern and northeastern parts of Spain, looking wetter than average through there. Drier than average through southern and southwestern parts of Spain and into Portugal. And then we find it goes wetter again into the southern part of the Scandinavian Peninsula, particularly southern parts of Norway and uh, also Sweden and that uh, wet weather extending across the Baltic Sea into the Baltic Sea states of Latvia, Estonia and Lithuania go even further north than that and it turns drier than average where it is pretty cold. Right, week two will be the 27th of February to the 6th of March. A big area of high pressure sets up in the North Atlantic so that will bring colder north northeasterly winds into much of northern and uh, eastern, northeastern parts of Europe. Low pressure is down here. We find a ridge extending into the southeastern part of Europe where I would have thought that's going to be a milder ridge. Uh, the 500 millibar heights looks like that. So the core of the above average heights is in the North Atlantic, but extending into Europe as well. Below average heights down there across Spain, Portugal, North Africa, and also in the far northeast of Europe. Temperature anomalies for week two look like that. So still drier than average, or I should say milder than average, above average, uh, across much of Scandinavia, especially um, Norway and into Sweden, but also over the Baltic Sea, into Finland and the far northwest of Russia as well. Colder in the west of Europe, so Ireland, the UK, particularly England and Wales, France, particularly northern, western parts of France, the Low Countries, and down Spain and Portugal, coming out colder than average on that western side of Europe. Then it goes milder than average in the far south of Europe. Again, Italy, over the Asia, to the Balkans, towards the Black Sea, southwards 
into Greece and uh, Turkey uh, above average temperatures through there. Mediterranean-wise, it is an east-west split, so cold and average in the western corner, uh, western side of the Med, and mild and average over on the eastern side of the Med, and the divide somewhere around Italy, or Corsica and Sardinia. And uh, precipitation-wise, so it looks quite unsettled uh, through the Mediterranean, uh, particularly the central bowl, from uh, Italy back towards southern and eastern parts of Spain. Go north of that, many other areas are drier than normal, especially again in the western part of Europe, so the UK, Ireland, France, Germany, the Low Countries, Denmark, into southern parts of Norway and Sweden, driver drier than average through those regions, and even a little bit on the driver average side over on the eastern side of Europe as well. So quite a dry week to come there. Uh, across Europe next week. Now, week three is going to be the 6th to the 13th of March. High pressure pushes northwards to Greenland and Iceland. That allows a trough of low pressure to develop across much of uh, Europe, by the look of it. So that's got a more unsettled look to it, doesn't it? This is how the 500 millibar heights are looking. Again, got an area of above average heights through the North Atlantic up towards Greenland. Below average heights covering many parts of the Europe. You think that's going to send the jet stream southwards and bring colder weather into much of Europe. Let's have a look at the temperature anomaly. So, well, 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 we're getting colder than average across much of northern and uh, also uh, western Europe. So, we've got colder than average temperatures there through France, through Germany, through the low countries, up to Scandinavia. Even extending over the Baltic Sea into those Baltic Sea states as well. And the UK and Ireland coming out with colder than average temperatures. The uh, mild temperatures, the warm, being squeezed down into the extreme east and southeast of Europe, like from southern parts of Ukraine into the Black Sea, and then again, like uh, around Greece, Turkey, looking substantially mild than average. Then Romania looking milder than average uh, as well, I think. Further westwards into the western part of the Med, not as cold. Those it is further north, but certainly that's where the, the coolest temperatures are in the Mediterranean through Portugal, Spain, and into the central bowl there. And precipitation wise, quite a big change goes uh, above average for precipitation across much of uh, Europe, actually. So, all the way from like Spain and Portugal in the southwest, right way up to the Russian border. Uh, and many areas in between with either average or above average precipitation. And of course, the further north you go, the colder it gets. And even though we're into March, uh, quite a bit of that precipitation could be snow uh, across the northern parts of Europe. So quite a wintry, cold and wintry uh, start to uh, March or early March there with this uh, but with this prediction. Uh, going further north into Scandinavia, we find that Norway looking dry over normal and Iceland, Greenland, uh, where we're close to the blocking area of high pressure, dry through there as well. Week four will be the 13th to the 20th of March. Still with low pressure covering much of Europe. Hints at Hints of high pressure still around Greenland and Iceland. How the 500 millibar heights looking. So, still more or less in the same pattern. It's a week of seal because it's week four, but still suggesting like blocking around Greenland below average heights underneath it. Um, so, the temperature anomaly for week four looks like that. So, the coldest temperatures retreating perhaps up towards Scandinavia, trying to go a bit milder across western parts of Europe, Ireland, UK. France, Spain, Portugal, and uh, remain quite mild over on the eastern side of Europe as well. And how's the precipitation looking? So above average precipitation really across many uh, northern and western parts of Europe. Again, quite a wet, uh, quite, a, quite a wet spell. So very different March to February, which has been a really dry month across many parts of Europe, UK and Ireland included in that. Uh, looks like it could be in for a, a very different uh, uh, month in March with much more in the way of precipitation. If it's cold enough, that precipitation will be wintry, uh, of course, giving sleet and snow. And that wet weather extends all the way from the west, from France, UK, Ireland, right way over towards the eastern part of Europe, uh, into western Russia, down into uh, the Black Sea areas as well. First south of that, a little bit on the drier side through North Africa into the Med, and still quite dry 
through uh, northern western parts of Scandinavia. Right, that's the first day. Look, okay, done. Let's just have a look at weeks five and six data before we go. So week five will be the 20th, 27th of March. That's how it looks. So still hints of blocking there around Greenland and Iceland. Low pressure in the Atlantic into much of uh, Europe. The 500 millibar heights looks like that. So again, still the hints of blocking around Greenland black back into the Arctic. It's undoubtedly a result of the sun's stratospheric warming. Low pressure into western uh, parts of Europe there. The temperature anomaly is uh, cold across Scandinavia, the extreme north of Europe, mildest in the far south and southeastern part of Europe. And precipitation-wise, it remains, it's weakening seal, but it remains relatively dry where it goes that blocking area of high pressure in the far north. Otherwise, many other areas, either average, no signal, or a bit above average for precipitation. And then week six, we were 27th of March to the 3rd of April. And still with that blocking signal, interesting, isn't it? Very long-lasting blocking around Greenland and into the uh, northern latitudes, 500 millibar heights. Again, suggesting that there's a lot of uh, high pressure, you know, around Greenland and Iceland. Well, that remains the case. The jet stream will remain in an, an, in an unusual position. So, northern Europe again, Scandinavia, far north east Europe, cold and average there. Otherwise, it's no signal trying to get a bit milder. Maybe, and precipitation wise, again, see where all the blocking is in the North Atlantic up here, wetter down across the far south of uh, Europe. Um, interesting, interesting, interesting spring here. And I reckon these blocking signals are undoubtedly coming from the uh, SSW. So we shall see, but that's how it's looking uh, for this week. We do it all over again next Tuesday. Remember, any forecast beyond five, seven days comes with big cow warnings and large pinches of salt attached. So, you know, let's wait and see how things look uh, when we do uh, next week's external European outlook. We will have a look at this moment again on Friday evening, probably around 7 o'clock on Friday evening, just with the UK and Ireland focus. We're going to be back later on for your 10 to 14 there, so come back for that then. For this week's extended European Outlook, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.